Hi, Bitches Brews here with another Roller Derby Strategy video. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can score six points in a pass. Yes, folks, that's what I said, a six-point pass. No, it's not as rare as, say, a unicorn. And yes, I know what you're thinking. There's only five players on the other team. I can only score on them once each pass. So how can anyone possibly get a six-point pass? The reason you can get a six-point pass is that while you can only score on blockers once per pass through the pack, a jammer can be scored on every time she's lapped. It doesn't matter what the pack is doing. The June 2013 WFTDA rules have clarified jammer lap points more than ever before. Rule 8.3 includes the sentence, Jammer lap points are independent of scoring passes. In the second half of this video, I'll touch on more unusual parts of this rule, but to start, let's take a close look at Rule 8.2.1. A jammer may score a jammer lap point on their initial pass. If you're like me, you've read this rule and maybe you've had some trouble wrapping your head around it. You're thinking, so the opposing jammer just decides to stand still on the track or something? Huh. Let's take a look at what scoring on the jammer in your initial pass looks like. It happens when you have a soul crush with an Eat the Baby. This clip is from May 2013 bout between Paradise City Rollers from Springfield, Mass. in purple and the Elm City Derby Dames of Keene, New Hampshire in red. Right off the start whistle, Elm City's jammer knocks the Paradise jammer out of bounds and skates clockwise. Watch how the Elm City pack sees what's happening and takes over the front, pulling the pack forward. Once the Paradise Jammer returns to play, she is stuck in the middle of the pack and is considered to be on the pass before her initial pass. Elm City's Jammer skates forward and when she reaches the pack now, she is beginning her initial pass. Moments before the Elm City Jammer breaks through the pack to earn lead, she passes the opposing Jammer, earning one point for the Jammer lap point. Her jammer referee will not indicate this point until she completes her first scoring pass. Let's watch the rest of the video. In order to get a full six point pass, Elm City's pack needed to keep the Paradise Jammer in the pack so their jammer could pass the whole pack and the jammer again. Here's an animation on scoring that elusive six-point pass. One jammer knocks the opposing jammer out of bounds. This can happen at any point in a jam. My example right now is showing this at the start whistle. The inbounds jammer skates clockwise to the front of the pack while her own blockers take control of the front of the pack. The inbounds jammer returns to a normal skating direction in time to force the out-of-bounds jammer to return behind her own blockers in the pack. She is now on the pass before her initial pass, while the initiating jammer is on her initial pass. The blocking jammer completes her initial pass while lapping the receiving jammer. The blocking jammer has just scored a jammer lap point during her initial pass. The receiving jammer continues to be held within the pack and the blocking jammer laps the pack and jammer again. At this point, she receives six points, two jammer lap points, and one for each opposing blocker. This can also happen later than the initial pass. If a jammer feeds her pack a soul-crushed baby, the soul-crushed jammer is considered on the lap before the lap she was on previously if she was soul-crushed after starting her next scoring pass. Let's take a moment to cover some questions I'm sure are pressing on your derby brain. What the heck is a soul-crush? A soul-crush is a play where one blocker knocks an opponent out of bounds, then skates clockwise to force the out-of-bounds skater to return to the track at a point significantly farther back than where she left. Ideal soul crushes involve both moving a skater from the front of the pack to the rear of the pack, as well as taking advantage of curved portions of the track, forcing an out-of-bounds blocker or jammer back much further if the hit was to the outside than if it were on the inside of the track. What then is Eat the Baby? 
Eat the baby is a cooperative move between a team's jammer and blockers to return the opposing jammer to the pack. It's not uncommon for both jammers to leave the pack at nearly the same time, especially with smart jammers following each other through the pack. An example might be if the foremost jammer, after both jammers have left the pack, has her own blockers at the front of the pack, goes in defensive mode. She may be able to defensively block the opposing jammer back into the engagement zone where her blockers can return to blocking the opposing jammer, and she can take off and return to attempting a new pass. Eating the baby can start anywhere around the track, but it is always when a jammer takes her opposing jammer back to the pack from a point usually outside the forward engagement zone, usually from a point where her own blockers would not be allowed to skate. Can blockers pull off the six-point pass play? Not likely. In order to soul crush behind the engagement zone, more than 20 feet behind the pack, only a jammer can be the opponent to force a jammer clockwise to the front of the pack. If a blocker knocks the jammer out of bounds, the moment she skates more than 20 feet behind the pack, she's considered out of play. Not only can the jammer come in in front of her because she's out of play, but one of the pack referees will give her an out-of-play warning, and she must skate forward to return to play at this time, or she will receive a major out-of-play penalty. If a jammer can soul-crush the opposing jammer to lap negative one, can she keep skating clockwise, making the out-of-play jammer also skate clockwise more than one lap and be, for example, at lap negative two? The April 24, 2013 WFTDA clarification says laps are not cumulative and the jammer blocked out of bounds is not required to skate more than one lap clockwise if the inbounds jammer skates one or more laps in the clockwise direction. The WFTDA has not clarified whether a soul crush can be repeated after a jammer has returned to play, bringing her back two passes from where she started. In this video you shared, when the soul crush jammer exits the pack, why is that not considered her first pass? In WFTDA rules 8.4.2, if a jammer is lapped by the pack before beginning their initial pass, it will not be considered their initial pass. The jammer's forward engagement of the pack on their subsequent pass will be considered their initial pass. So if I have to fix my skate or other equipment, I get scored on every time the opposing jammer passes me? Now it doesn't work that way. If you have removed yourself from the track, you are considered not on the track. NOTT points are awarded the moment the opposing jammer passes one of your blockers in a scoring pass. If you stay on the track to fix your equipment, then you would be scored on for each jammer lap point. This is Bitches Bruise, and I want to thank you for watching. You can find more strategy concepts and practice drills on my website, promiseofderby.com. I'm available for travel coaching around the world, having coached around the United States and Europe. You can hear me on WFTDA.TV under my real name, Amy Jo Moore, calling events like the East Coast Derby Extravaganza and WFTDA Playoff Tournaments. If you'd like more of these videos, be sure to like this one and subscribe to my channel at YouTube.com Bitches Brews.